Hey! Hey! What? Ha, ha, hey! Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You have to hear that through the computer audio. Which you did. You heard that through the computer audio. Never Ooh. mind. Hi! Hey, good morning. Good uh, evening. Good whatever day it is. You guys, um, hi. Uh, Welcome to noon. Welcome to noon. The second noon. Uh, <laughs> um, how's the music before I start jabbering at you? Is it loud? I'm going to bring it down a little. It's fine. Is that good? Okay. All right. Um, well, hey, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to my little handmade, heartfelt run away and join the circus from the comfort of your own home. Insanity fun show. I'm, I'm glad we've all unmuted. It's May. And aside from being the name of the month that we're currently in, I will point out that the dictionary definition of the word May is as such to be in some degree likely to or expressing possibility. In other words, May is a state that exists between one reality and potentially, or even likely, another. It may be winter, it may be spring. The cat may be alive in the box, it may be dead in the box, or both. This, of course, works perfectly with our theme for month number nine. Number nine. Number nine, number nine. Uh, in my one year long magical personal imprisonment experiment, because the theme is illusions. According to the same dictionary that I mentioned earlier, you know the one, an illusion is defined as a misleading visual image or a thing that is or is likely to be wrongly perceived or interpreted by the senses. This is my definition. Illusions are a terrible trick that is trying to trick you. Hopefully, what we'll all ultimately see this evening will prove to be much more than that which meets the eye. So, a good segue into this, I think, is to talk about Rubik's Cube. Uh, first of all, I've been, I've been working on this Rubik's Cube stuff. Magicians these days use Rubik's Cubes all the time. Well, I've only ever wanted to be able to solve the dang thing. So I went to the library and I got myself a book on how to solve Rubik's Cubes. I've been, I've been working on it. And I think I figured it out. I could be wrong. Let me try. Uh, let's do this. Let's go. I did it. I solved the little guy. Let's see if I can do the big one, okay? Let's see, this guy. Uh, we'll use the exact same three motions that I just used, and and we didn't do it. I don't know what, I don't know what we're wrong. Oh, let's do, nope. Forget, forget it. So, but here's the thing. I may or may not be able to solve some of those Rubik's Cubes, but I've got another Rubik's Cube that is right here. My question to you guys is, why will I not be able to solve this Rubik's Cube? Anybody have an idea? Eden? Any theories as to why I will not be able to solve this Rubik's Cube? Aside from being bad at it? No. No? I'll show you why I cannot solve this Rubik's Cube. And again, this is why it's a good segue into illusions. Take a close look. This is why not. That is why, because it's not real, and it's a perspective illusion, a lot like this one. It's exactly the same, but larger, for no reason. Uh, see, I didn't really need to make a second one, but I, I, they, I'll tell you the truth, they screwed up, so I got, that's for free. Uh -huh. okay. Moving forward, um, listen. Before I begin, really begin, uh, I want to introduce you to a little friend of mine. Uh, it's this little guy. It's a uh, this dragon. You should be somewhat familiar 
to some of you, hopefully. Anybody ever seen this before? Uh, see how his eyes follow you no matter where I turn it? Do you realize that his head is inside out? Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty weird, right? You see that moment where your brain flips it? Okay. So um, what I want to also tell you, uh, aside from showing you this, how cool is that? Uh, this illusion was created by an Oregonian. And uh, not only was he an Oregonian, he was Oregon's greatest magician. And though he is no longer with us, Gary Andrus was truly one of the greatest illusion inventors that ever walked the earth. He was beloved in the magic community. Uh, I turned the music down just a little bit there. Sorry guys, I lost what I was trying to say. He was studied, he was regarded as one of magic's most creative minds, a true original, an oddball. And he lived in Albany, Oregon of all places. Lydia and I, my daughter Lydia and I recently visited his peculiar house there, which is still standing. Uh, it's called the Keyhole House. Uh, I made a short little exploratory film about Jerry Andrus, and I'm gonna detour us for a moment. I'm gonna pause right there and uh, show you this. Um, and uh, I, cause I think it's important. So I'm excited to share this film with you right now, and I promise it is very short. So here we go. You guys ready? Ready. Okay. Every year, if I put my hand into the wall, I get a wall. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> It's good. Wow. The amazing thing is that if I put my hand into the wall, the ball reappears. Oh. It's out of my roots, the ball's killing me. As a tennis record, you don't have to buy a new ball again. You can simply recycle by pushing it back. And whenever you want to, all you have to do, and that's easy to remember, just do a little double tap. Here we go. I have love that, that everything comes out of that. We were very good friends with Jerry Andrus. And I don't know how important he was to you as an individual, but his ball bearing routine, uh, you owe a lot in the tennis ball routine to that. It's wonderful stuff. But the trick that... Uh, and let me just tell this very brief story because this is about um, Oregon. One of the magicians I'm pleased to talk about in the book is uh, Jerry Andrus. Jerry Andrus would not be known to the public, but if you've ever been fascinated with optical illusions, particularly the one with the spiral that makes your uh, vision go wonky for a few minutes, Jerry Andrus was one of the greatest illusion designers and one of the quirkiest and most important magic inventors of all time. Please welcome Jerry Andrus. And Jerry Andrus, Jerry is a magician. This is the house that Jerry Andrus lived in and built all sorts of crazy things inside of. His family owned this house, I guess. Um, have, have, it's been in the family, his family, since 1928 here in Albany, Oregon. It's called the Keyhole House. Yeah, it's pretty well known among folks in Albany. Uh, many famous magicians would come and visit him and check out the crazy stuff he was working on. And uh, I pick Lydia up in Albany every time I come to get her. So it just makes sense to come and check it out. Just got to be a creative, eccentric genius. And um, what a nice house to uh, quietly work on it all. How neat. I wish we could go knock on the door and talk to him. 
Jerry Andrus's house looks innocent from the outside, but inside lurks a strange collection of gadgets that has helped this house become known as the Castle of Chaos. I was born with an insatiable curiosity, and I've always wondered about things. I've wondered about how nature works. I've wondered about how the human mind works. And so and I've uh, experimented and tinkered with things uh, ever since I was a child. Here lives a man who wonders about zone zero. Put the ball through the hole into zone zero and it instantly vanishes. But look, it is retrievable. Like a functional black hole, the ball goes through the hole, it's gone, completely, totally gone, but instantly retrievable. Got it figured out yet? Here's another one. This uh, represents two large brass nuts. When I move them, they look like they're moving independently. Now, I have a straight tube here. I'm going to push this straight tube through this nut. And you'll see that it looks like it has to bend in the middle to go through the other one. You see, the straight tube looks like it's bent in order to go through the other one. Now, here again, your wonderful brain has just shown you something different than what it really is. This is made out of plastic, and you are looking at the inside of this. Our wonderful brain interprets something different than it actually is, but it doesn't mean that it's made a mistake. It, it took the information it had, and it did its best job. Here, watch this. Look, it's not a box at all. I was just standing in the corner of this framework, and you could see it has no resemblance to a box at all. And your wonderful brain interpreted that picture on your retina as a box. I have a little flat panel here, and I'm going to add it to the corner of the box, and you'll see a strange thing. It will look like I've cut the corner off of the box. See, the corner is now gone off of the box. Now I'm going to punch a hole in the box. Now you can see into the box. Now I'm going to put this tube in there. And now if I turn the box, it'll look like the tube is like a gun sticking out of a gun turret, weaving back and forth. Looks like it's moving in relation to the box. It actually isn't. I'll show you what you have. You're just looking at the inside of this. But, and I've painted it on the inside so that it looks like the outside. Now if I take the corner off, take this off, it adds the corner back onto the box and we're back where we started with the Paradox box. This is what I call my trizonal space warper. I'm going to spin this disc. Yes. Here indeed lives a man who wonders. He wonders about the trizonal space warper and why it is that if you will continue to stare at its center, keep your eyes on the center and watch as it turns. Watch this strange wheel with the pulsing zones. Watch the center of the space warper as it turns. Here indeed is a strange phenomena. For now, if you will look away at the face of a friend or anything, you will see it move for a time, as if space itself had some way gone temporarily wild. Strange indeed. And now, in closing, I do hope that you will wonder too, for therein lies the destiny of man. Hi, this is Jerry Andrus. I'm at my home, which I call the Castle of Chaos in Albany, Oregon. I'm just showing you some of the strange and unusual things here, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I thank you for watching. That is a cool dude. Uh, cool. So very, it's so cool. That guy's so awesome. Um, okay, let's get the music going again. What and was that called? 
It's called the, the Trizonal Space Warper. Sure. Wow. That was really cool. Yeah, that's Jerry Andrews. Once again, he, you know, he made this. This is probably his most well-known. Huh. This thing is pretty freaky. I'll, I'll set it down and it will follow me in the room. It's very odd. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, we went through that together. Let's keep going forward, guys. Uh, back to illusions. Uh, I want to make this clear, though, we are going to look at some illusions. Um, uh, this is also a magic show. So rather than a show exploring pure optical illusions, we're also going to look at the intersection of optical illusion and magic. So there's going to be some card magic and coins and rope and that kind of thing, but it won't be normal. It'll be illusion adjacent, we'll say, or just straight up a, a illusion. Um, this would be an example. I don't know. I would almost call this a uh, illusion adjacent, an illusion created by using sleight of hand. So you've got, you know, here's regular. Here, let me do that so I can see what's going on. Um, these are great. These are these blue back uh, old cards that were. Um, a replicas of what they used uh, in the Revolution Revolutionary War times. Early American, no indices, very simple playing cards. I'm going to use these for this. And this would be an example of an illusion, I suppose. OK. All right, here, let's do that. Let's do this. Rub that into being our four aces. Woo! Yes. And how about the last one? I think would be what the diamond. There you go. I don't know. That's that. You can also do this. Whoa. All right, moving on. Um, let's actually do an actual, actual optical illusion thing right now. Illusion right now. Um, and that is this. If you guys saw the promo video I did uh, today, uh, you might have seen this classic optical illusion called the Ames window. Um, and um, yeah, so. Anyway, I'm just going to show you like a little bit of this and a little bit of that. All of it's going to be just a show full of visual surprises. So get ready. Um, here's the Ames window. OK, hopefully I've wound it up enough. Let's talk a little bit about what we are seeing. I see a window that looks like it's kind of angled away from us. There's a bit of perspective to this, no? So watch this very carefully. I'm going to let it turn around find it's, um, it's, it's a balance. It's a, what you're going to start to see is this the window is not turning all the way around 360 degrees. It's turning yeah. 180 degrees and then it turns back the other way. There's a sweet spot in terms of line of perspective, line of eye line. I'm trying to find it, but do you see this The window turns? goes 180, yeah. comes back. Okay. Now, here's where things get kind of fun. I'm going to put a pencil into the window and balance it right through the center of the frame. Now watch very carefully. window is still wanting to go about 180 degrees and then turn back around. The pencil what? is going to go all the way through the window. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> That's so like wow. It hurts the brain. <laughs> That's what this whole show is about. Let's, I want to keep, I just want to hurt your brain all night long. I love this. This is amazing. Um, it's different if you look at the window versus the 
<laughs> it depends, depending on what you're focusing on. Yeah. Um, I found that it worked really well if it was going slowly. I'm kind of worried that as fast as it's going, it's hard to see what's happening. But I think you guys are. Oh, no. I, I'm seeing it. Anyway, there you go. There you go. So here we go. Um, let's get into it. Um, uh, here's a good example of, well, a very good intersection of, of uh, magic and illusion. Um, this is a, do I really need to pull these out? Scissors, I cut a king of hearts in half, okay? For your pleasure. Here it is, king of hearts. Uh, I'm gonna show you this um, uh, thing where we're gonna talk about the Z, the Z line. We have U of X, Y axis, and Z axis, right? If we were in a 3D film right now, we'd be talking about X axis, right? Something like that, okay? And then as I pull this back, along the Z axis, I'm gonna show you what happens. We're gonna, I'm gonna take my left hand and we're gonna make that go in front of the uh, right hand. I sure wish this was in 3D. So now it's behind the card. No, it's not. What? I'm here to hurt your brain. See? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Thank you. There you go. There you go. Um, you have been tricked. Yes. <clears throat> and it won't be the last time. No. Uh, what, what now? Um, let's do this. This is one that I came up with. Um, that I, I hopefully can do. God, I hope I can do it. Um, this is, well, first of all, here's a, here's a card. You're familiar with cards. Uh, and this is a magnifier. It's like a lenticular magnifier. You would use this to, um, if you're reading, you would magnify, you could magnify your teeth like this or your, or your eyes, right? It's a magnifier. And watch what happens. Watch this. Woo! See that? Isn't that crazy? Now watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna make it big and we're gonna return every, <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Perfection. Glorious success. Let's see. Um, hey, uh, Tracy, can I get you for uh, to volunteer for something? Yeah. OK, great. Tra Tracy, this is not lenticular, like the last thing. Uh, it's a see-through um, screen. You should be able to see mm -hmm. my hand. Yeah. Yep. A, a lot of reflections and such. Right. Um, yeah. OK. What I'm going to do, uh, Tracy, is um, have you pick any card, any card at all, and I can just run my finger over it, like so. You just tell me, tell me where to stop. Stop. <laughs> okay, right here. Okay, Tracy, here we go. Great, 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 great. You have, uh, you have an Ace of Hearts. That's a good card. It's a good card indeed. Um, and what we're gonna do, let me work through this in my head, is we're going to put it, um, we're gonna put it on, in the screen, like so. So, that would look something like this, and then that would be it right there, okay? So you got your card in the screen, but this is what we also need to do, which is have you pick a second card. And can you just tell me where to tell me where to stop? Stop. We get right here. Okay. All right. Wonderful. I'm not gonna tell you which one this is. I'm just gonna I'm gonna peek at it. Okay. Can I tell you what it is? <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. It's a jack of diamond. Okay. Okay. Keep that in mind. So. Watch this very carefully. We know that we've got an ace, an ace of hearts here. We have a jack of diamonds here. Okay, Tracy, watch very carefully. Watch very carefully. Oh. 
Oh. Okay. Now, Trace, your card is turned into a jack. And this card right here is turned into the ace of hearts. You'll just have to take my word that it was also, at one point, a jack of diamonds. Um, there's a little bit of a switcheroo. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Stan. Okay. Man McCoy. Listen, I got this, I got this, uh, I, I bought this bicycle deck. Uh, it's an old school bicycle deck. Um, like old, like you can tell the difference, maybe. In design, it's just barely different. Uh, mm -hmm. And I could swear it's just slightly slimmer. I don't know. Um, doesn't have a date on it. This doesn't matter. Nonetheless, I have this bicycle deck, and uh, I'm gonna pull a card out. Uh, in fact, well, here, tell me where to stop, and I'll just stop on the one I want to stop on. Ready? Yeah. Uh, stop. Perfect. The one that is on top. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. The two of Diamonds, that's a good card. Diamond. Yeah, here, let's get that. Let's lose it. Did I say diamonds? I said it like three times. Two of spades. Thank you guys for correcting. Um, okay, somewhere in the middle. Ah. Okay, Cheyenne, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to twist this around. There. I've lost it somewhere in the deck maybe even misplace it in a most extraordinary way. Hmm. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Well, here. Okay, so let's go over the let's go over the facts. What did we just establish? Uh, you I I forced a card on you just right out in the open. It was the not two of diamonds, but the two of spades, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's part of the trick. Maybe it's not. Anyway, so we've established I've, I've hidden it in the deck, and and then we lost it somewhere in there. I spun the thing around, and I told you that we're going to find it in a most extraordinary way. Correct? Correct. Okay, cool. Okay, so we've established that it's somewhere, somewhere in this blue bicycle deck. I did this. It's somewhere, and we're very likely to find it in a most extraordinary way. I, I realize I'm going over this too much, but... Are you having a great time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, me too, me too. So uh, let's find your card, like I say, in a most extraordinary way and um, something maybe like this. Oh. <laughs> I found it. I found it for you, Cheyenne, because I love you. Okay. There you go. Beautiful. Thank you for finding me. <laughs> um, my mother, during the last show, really got a kick out of that deck of cards changing color. And I was very impressed that nobody said anything. That's really the trick. <laughs> anyway, you're welcome, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you guys, let's get back to illusions. I mean, that's really why we're here, right? Okay, look. I've got myself a, a, uh, a domino, okay? I'm gonna illustrate a, a, a point, I think, hopefully, about what our brains do. And that is, well, I'll start by doing this. On this side, I have a, a one. Okay, that's one. On this side, I have four. Uh, on this side, I have three. On this side, I've got six. But once again, uh, on this side, I have one. On this side, I have four. On this side, I have three. And on this side, of course, I have six. Now, most of you, if not all of you, have already figured out what's going on. And now I'll point it out. Your brain is filling stuff in. So if depending on what I want to do, I could say that that's one. I could put a hand right there and make that look like three. But really what we have is two dots, okay? On this side, it's also true. 
that we have four, but maybe if I lift my hand, you'll discover I have five. With that, I can make that six, six. So again, on this side, we have three. And again, on this side, we have six. <laughs> you following that? So on this side, of course, like I said, there is six. And then of course, on this side, there is nine. <laughs> You're doing. <laughs> of course, of course. I'm melting your brain. And um, melting your brain. Um, listen. Let's do stuff. More stuff. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull some cards out of this deck. Okay. I'm also going to do, I'm going to probably use this deck. And um, some debate among magicians as to what is the best red or blue. And I started off loving blue and now I love red. I just think it shows up visually better. Um, okay, so this, these cards, do you guys know, can you, is it easy to tell what's wrong with these cards just from looking at them on the mat? No. No? No. They're too big. Is that obvious? No. No? Are you sure? Because the card deck is incredibly small. What? I mean, <laughs> it's pretty obvious, right? Um. Um, <laughs> so, um, listen, I'm going to set this down. Okay, I'm going to just take three cards here. Um, and that's perfect. That's perfect. Two jokers, one seven of hearts. I'm gonna have to get up close, you guys. Um, I am going to take this card. I'm going to drop it. No, I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is actually put it behind this card, like so. My hope is that you guys can see what's going on. You see that the seven is behind the back, the middle joker. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, watch very carefully. Um, you can do something like this, and you should see. Oops, and that is hmm. That didn't. That's not very clear. That that wasn't very clear at all. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's take that back. Put, take it backward. Put it backward. It'll be more visual this way. I'm gonna put it here again, and attempt to do the same thing. I'm in an awkward position now. Here we go. Ready? Okay, was I don't know. Was that weird? No, oh, yeah, I get it. Well, I don't get it, but I see what I see it happening. Wait, 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 wait. This could be cooler. Watch very care. Watch very carefully. I'm gonna I'm gonna reverse this. I'm gonna put it here in the middle. And now watch very carefully. It's in the middle. Mm -hmm. And now it is behind the cards. Crazy. The last. Uh, I think what I want to do is. Oh, you know what I want to do? I'm gonna put that that seven of cards, seven of hearts, inside of this deck. Seven of cards. The seven of cards. <laughs> and we're gonna lose it right there. It's inside of this deck. Getting rid of it just because. Just because. And now. Um, I'm going to do the following. We're going to take, we're going to take that deck. We're going to lose it inside of this black case. Let me get a little closer to you guys for the sake of close up magic. Closer up magic. Okay. And then I'm going to shake this and shrink it. We've shrunk, we've shrunk it. So there it is. Well, honey, I shrunk the deck. Honey, I shrunk the deck. <laughs> so. Get it. Yeah. Let's keep making things big and small and big and small. <laughs> it's so much fun. Um uh let's get a let's get a new let's get a new volunteer. Um uh I, you know I'm gonna we're gonna talk about this for a second. This is uh back in the day, many, many uh, moons ago. This would be called a playtime game. Playtime cards, mini cards. We just call them mini playing cards now. 
small plant growth, but this is playtime. Uh, uh, why did I need to tell you that? I didn't need to tell you that. Um, but this trick involves playtime cards. So I'm gonna grab um, the first person who raises their hand. Anna? Yep. You just raise your hand? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anna, check it out. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna take a deck of playtime cards and spread them out across the table like so until we get a nice even spread of all of these guys. Ouch. Hi, Leah. Leah. She, she went into the other room again. She doesn't like magic. Most dogs uh, that I've done magic for don't like it. Really? Yeah, dog uh, and cats. That is the devil's work? Yeah. <laughs> just, they're just simply not interested. Oh. Like, these, I got these cards to spread out better, OK? Yes. We're back on track. Back, baby. Yeah. This is it. Listen, Anna, I, uh, um, I, I'm going to, these, these are playtime cards to give you an idea of uh, perspective, okay? The, um, just for scale. Yep. You see these cards? Uh-huh. These are regular sized cards. Yeah. Okay? Yep. But it doesn't take very much to make them small. What? Whoa. Yeah. And so what we'll do is we're going to use these guys to help us. First of all, let's have you pick a card, OK? I'm going to run okay. my, my hand back and forth. And you just you tell me to say stop at some point. There's a bit of a delay. OK, perfect. That will do. Anna, this will be your card, OK? You got it? Got it. The seven of spades. Yep. I'm gonna put it back in, okay? Well, first of all, I'm gonna have these kings take a look at it. They're going to assist me in finding your card, okay? And so I'm going to now uh, uh, push all these cards back, like so. And hold on one second. I'm listening, and these guys are telling me. They're not going to help me find it, but what they're going to do is make it obvious. And no, that is not a very obvious statement. It will be obvious to you right now, because now I've made all the cards big. Okay? These kings have assisted me in enlarging the cards so that we can better find your card hand. Which is right here. What? To scale, there you go. Okay. Yep. It happened, and it happened here, folks. <laughs> the things it's getting small. big and the things getting small and or big again. I think it's time that we graduate yep. from that concept and move into other concepts, other things. Um, and so, Let's do something with rope. I never play with rope, ever. I just don't. I don't do a lot of magic with string or rope. So, but I'm gonna show you, well, shoot. I think we're actually still in that, that area of, of size because we've got a medium sized rope. We have a large size rope. We've got a tiny rope, a, a baby bear, if you will, mm -hmm. and a mama bear, if you will, and a papa bear rope, if you will. And what I'll do is do the following. I'm going to just grab these and go like this. Hey! And look right there. These guys are now all the same size. Okay? And I hope that uh, I hope that you believe me. Um, we don't believe anything at your magic shows. Well, would I deceive you? Yes. Would I? Yes. Um, repeatedly. Repeatedly? 
And and there you go. And so yeah, three three medium sized ropes. Now, of course, the best thing that we could do is restore this back to its original size. And that is quite simple. We have our papa bear, we have our mama bear, and we have our baby bear. And just like that. Bang. Uh, bang. You got magic. Just like that. Uh, let's now, um, now we'll get out of that stuff. Hey guys, watch this. Coin. And I've got a bicycle deck, don't I? And so watch this very carefully. Watch very carefully. Where'd it go? Wait, it's right here. It's right, it's, where'd it go? If I could only just keep my hands steady. Maybe you could catch where it went, but it's not very easy, is it? Well. If you're having trouble with this, that's okay. Hey, check it out. I want to show you something inside of this. Watch. Okay, watch this very carefully. Uh, uh, oh, first of all, an introduction. Oh, an introduction to all of these wonderful cards. Um, cards. You know, just cards. Um, watch this madness. Um, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I was gonna use that coin. Wait, there we go. I found it. It was uh, buried inside of the surface of the third deck. Um, here we go. Watch this. No, no, no. Be careful. Uh -oh. ooh, ooh. Ah, ah. transition now to uh, a number of tricks that involve holes. Okay? This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, um, let's just start with this, first of all. I've got a, uh, a card. It's a queen of, uh, queen of clubs. There's a hole cut through it. Um, there's no, there's nothing, um, there's nothing in addition to what you see. There's no uh, split. I hope you can, and it's hard to focus, but I hope that you can see that you just have, um, you know, there's my finger. There's no additional slit. It's an honest hole. At the end of the day, that is an honest hole. Um, check this out. I'm going to use these coins. Um, I'm not able, I'm not able to get a quarter through this hole. Uh, I'm not able to get a nickel through this hole. I'm not even able to get a penny through the hole. Can I get a dime through it? Uh, I can't, I cannot. Not for lack of trying. Not for lack of trying, but I can get a Morgan dollar through it. If you believe in me. It just depends on how much you believe in me. So look, look very carefully. Okay, here. It's not, it's not the best trick of the night. I'll do it one more time, because it's that good, it's that bad. Here you go. And right in the middle, and 
Yeah. There it is. Best trick of the night. Yes. The best and the worst. Um, but that is a trick involving holes. So we'll move on to the next trick of the night. You guys ever seen the movie uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Anybody? Yeah, right. You guys, are you familiar with the concept of the acme hole? Hole? Oh. The acme hole? The hole or the hole? Yes. Oh, the hole, yeah. You're right. It's like, yes. a, it's like it's an object. You can pull it out and throw it against the wall, and then you have a hole in the wall, or on the ground, and there's a hole. It's very useful in that Looney Tunes cartoon sort of way. Okay. I have a card right now that has a hole in it. Okay. This this uh is a king of clubs. And as you can see, there is a hole in the card. With my nose, with my eye. And as true as it is that there's a hole in the front of the card, there's also a hole in the back of the card. And I'm gonna peel that hole off right now. It's a sticker. So, you know, think about that <laughs> all night long <clears throat> while you try to sleep. Um, like... <laughs> let's keep doing stuff with holes. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Here we go. Um, Let's see. Um, I've got some more volunteer tricks coming up, by the way. Uh, just so you guys know, um, I have um, I have two cards. I've got an Ace of Hearts. I have an Ace of Clubs. Okay. And I'll do something very simple here, which is to take uh, the Ace of Clubs, and I'm gonna just make them kiss and. There you go. And then watch very carefully. Now, one of them has a square. <laughs> Loxley, would you help me? Yes. Excellent. I have a need for you to um, pick a card for me. I'm going to ripple through this deck, OK? And you tell me when to stop. Okay. Okay. Uh, stop. Okay. Not that card, but this card. And that card will be um, uh, the uh, Jack of Clubs, which is great. Let's let's take your card and lose him in here, somewhere, somewhere in the middle. Now, I'm going to make him jump into the ether, and we'll return him in a second. We're going to find him using an unusual method. Uh, I'm going to pull two cards out of this deck. And they are jokers. They have, um, as you might be able to guess, they have um, holes in them. Since that is a, a theme that we're running with right now. Uh, okay, hold on one second. And um you know what i wanted to share with you but i forgot to do was that the jack that you just picked the jack of clubs was a two-eyed jack and i don't know if you know there's one-eyed jacks right there are two one-eyed jacks and they are the jack of spades and the jack of diamonds um the uh the jack of hearts and the jack of clubs are two-eyed and do you know what makes a one-eyed jack it's simply that the jack is facing and you see its profile. Well, the other jack is facing this way. So you put the two cards next to each other, they are looking at each other. It's kind of clever. Um, and um, it's like a conversation. So Loxley, what I have for you is, um, <laughs> I've got this. And I'll be a two-eyed jack, okay? Hopefully you can see my eyes. You can't, probably. But if you were to- Too dark. Yeah. 
you probably you'd injure me and blind me if you ran your fingers through. I'll at least do this for you, okay? I have two cards. They have holes in the middle. Now, what card are we looking for? What was your card? Uh, what was your card? Jack of clubs. Jack of clubs. Yeah, remember when I said it's jumped into the ether? Okay, it's popped out of that deck of cards. And I will show you right now what has become of it. Right there. <laughs> I could not figure that one out. <laughs> You don't have long sleeves, cause, so that couldn't have happened, right? <laughs> um, thank you, Lots of, Um, I like that one a lot. Now, uh, let's let's keep going. Um, okay. Hey, mom. Oh yeah. I got one for you. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yes. Um, do I need that anymore? Do I need that anymore? I don't think I do. Um, set that aside. Um, okay. Hey, mom, how are you? I'm good. You're good? Okay, mm -hmm. good. Um, listen, oh, I got three cards for you. Okay. And I want you to take a really close look here. Uh, and I want you to, to, yeah, I want you to memorize, I want you to memorize what we've got here, okay? Take a mental picture. Mm -hmm. Okay? You mm -hmm. good? Okay, mom, I want you to tell me what card is in the middle. Uh, three of ace, I mean, three of hearts, <laughs> sorry. The, the tree of hearts. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. The tree of hearts? The three of hearts. I could have, I could have, I could have swore you said the tree of hearts. Oh, oh I did, did I? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, mm, I think you did, and that's why the card. The um, of <laughs> wink. Um, okay. Uh, um, hey, Mikey, have you gone? Um, listen, here's what we're going to, I'm going to pull this table out just a little bit. Okay. Like so. Mikey, um, I'm going to, I'm going to pull out, um, some cards here. And how are you doing? You have guests today? Yeah. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Uh, just a couple of friends from, uh, from Arizona. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Um Arizona from Arizona. While we're in Arizona. Very cool. Um okay. Listen, so Mikey. Uh let's have you pick a card. Yeah. Okay. Uh we'll do like this. Yeah, we'll do the, the, the ripple through again. Okay. It's magic for you, Mikey. Here you go. And now. Here, here, there, there, keep going. That one. They keep going all the way down. This, is this good? Yep. You sure? Okay. Mikey, so not, not this card right here, but the card below it, that would be a, whoa, eight of hearts. Mikey, that is, that's a meaningless card. It's a good card. Uh, listen, I'm going to lose it as well inside of the tonight. Okay, and then I'm gonna give it a good shuffle. And we'll lose it, 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 lose it. And then I'm gonna put it back inside of the deck, like so. Hopefully I can do that. Okay. Okay. Then Mikey, I'm gonna shut the box. And then it's very, 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 very important that I do the following to the box. Mikey, I'm gonna find your card. I'm just gonna reach in and find it, okay? You ready? Okay. 
This one feels right. Grab it. I think I got it. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Whoa. Oh, crap. It's stuck. It's stuck, Mikey. <laughs> oh, okay. I got it. I got it. <laughs> you found it in your eight hearts. Right? That's the one. That was your card? Okay, great. So long. <laughs> Man. Man. <laughs> um, shoot, this is a weird one. Um, uh, oh, hey, check this out. Uh, this is really great. Um, this isn't a volunteer one, but um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. And um, check this out. This is uh, <laughs> here. We go. What? Look at this very carefully. Watch. Okay. Uh, I've got these four cards. They're all seven of somethings. So seven of spades, seven of hearts, and the seven of diamonds. Now, what I'm gonna do is. I'm going to snap my fingers and make one of them go flip around backward. There you go. Like so. That mm -hmm. was the seven of spades that flipped backward. OK, now let's make the uh, seven of spades flip back. We get the seven of clubs. There's our seven of spades again. That's the diamonds that have flipped backward. OK, now let's do something else. What will it be? Diamonds are back. How about the clubs? That works. Clubs have flipped backward. Now, let's make them all uniform again and come back. And we get our diamonds, our clubs, our hearts, and our spades. OK, here's a question I have for you guys. What was the color of the back of these cards? Blue. Blue? Blue? Are you sure? Because I, I think they're all red. I think they're all red. But then what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? What if they were green? Uh, and what if they're not all green? What if they are pink? That looks like red, but it's pink. And baby blue, that looks like normal blue, but it's, well, really, it's teal, I suppose. Aqua. And then orange, which also looks red. Now, uh, there's nowhere else to go with this trick. <laughs> but... Uh, Tricked you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that leads us to the last two, okay? Here we go. This is great. Um, I'm gonna throw this trick to someone who hasn't gone yet, but I don't know who that would be. I think everyone is gone. Well, is Eden still there? That's All right. Hi, right. how you doing Eden? Good. Um, I have a trick for you, and um, we're gonna start off this way, okay? I'm gonna ripple through, and you tell me where to stop. Okay? Stop. Okay, right there. Not the king of jack of hearts, but the one below it, which is the four of diamonds. Okay, eat it. I'm gonna lose your card somewhere in here. This is gonna be sort of similar to a trick I did a little bit ago, where I'm gonna enlist the help of two cards to help help me find your card. Okay? Um, here, look at that. We'll use the queen of spades, mm -hmm. and we'll find her match, her pair, uh, her fraternal twin. What would that be? Who's your brother? Uh... What's her sister? In all of this, your sister? Yeah, who's your twin sister? The the other dark queen. The queen of clubs. Nice. That is. That, that's correct. Okay, so fantastic, Eden. I've got uh, I've got a queen of clubs. I've got a um, queen of spades. Okay, you ready? Here's how we're gonna do this. A little bit closer. I am going to take this sister. I'm gonna flip her this way, okay? We're gonna find your card. 
by a, a certain process. And what you're about to see is just the first part of the process. Watch this very carefully. Okay, Eden, what? they are in the process of finding your card. Okay. Like melting okay. together, Eden. Okay, they melted into each other indeed. And now, flip that back over. And I think we will have succeeded in finding it. Wow, that was really cool. Thank you. Thank nice. You. Nice one. Thank you. Is that magic or did you trick us? Uh, you got tricked and it was magic. And those are different things. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is the last thing I'm gonna do. It's, it's gonna be the most, um, in, the most incredible thing that I will ever do in my life. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay. So um, it's gonna take a second. I am very uh, excited. I'm very nervous. <clears throat> so are we hmm. oh good oh good oh good okay uh, here we go <laughs> I have first of all um A, um, I have a box. I'm going to show you this box. This is what it looks like. Okay. I can see you through it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I can see you through it. I can, I can reach through and grab you. I'll try to grab you. Uh, and it's got stars on it, which make it very magical. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to put my arm through this box like so and reach through and I want you to know that this is my hand. I am not going to use any fake hands in this trick. Mm. Okay? Okay. As long as we've established that. Now, here we go. Okay? Okay. Ugh. Wow. Ugh. Talk, talk about illusion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Mm. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Again, this is the most incredible thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Slap bracelet and slap necklace. Slap necklace. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, this is um, this is Margaret. This is, I don't know why I'm doing that. Hello, Margaret is a magician and a musician. Um, and um. <laughs> I don't have a plan. I'm I'm just I'm <laughs> making this up as I go. Uh, okay. So Margaret, hit it. Wait. And okay, there we go. Thanks, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> Now, as I said, she's a magician and a musician. And she's going to do some tricks for you. Okay. Hopefully. Okay, go for it, Margaret. Watch this. Wait, it's not doing it. Wait. Wow. Wow. You can't, you can't see the plastic or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> and then Margaret is going to do. The, look at the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, look, it's Derek. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, and it's Love at First Sight. And the song's starting again. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, oh, I forgot. Vampire teeth, that's important. <laughs> And now it's just a dance party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are wonderful. This was a really bad magic show. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Woo! <laughs> You guys. I don't know if that was the best, but probably the most adorable. Oh, thank you. Oh, she's cute. Cheyenne helped me with this. Thank you, Cheyenne. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, never mind. Forget it. I had something else. Never mind. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, You guys got to hear, we got to beat twice. You're welcome. Um, Magic. You, yes. You guys, uh, I love you. I, love I won't, you I won't oh, apologize. Yeah. This. No. No, that was a good time. That was super fun. You broke my brain. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I broke, I broke something, I hope. I, I don't know what I broke, um, but um, you got tricked. Every trick tricked you all. We can at least all agree on that. Yep. And um, and I hope that you um, lose a lot of sleep trying to figure it all out. <laughs> and um, anyway, whatever. <laughs> I love you. <ya. laughs> I love you. Love oh. you. Love you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thanks, Robin. You're amazing. <laughs> Something. Maybe. Guess what? Next next month is mentalism. I'm not, I'm not gonna screw that up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's gonna be great. Uh, and um, I hope it's great. Well, um, I hope you guys have a good rest of your May and um, and dream sweet dreams and be good to each other. And I love you and I hope, you hope love, love you, honey. Bye. Bye, you guys. Okay. Goodbye. And have you ever seen um, uh, What's Eating Roger Rabbit? Mm -hmm. Who's framing? Who's, who's framed What's Eating Roger Rabbit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even question it. I was like, yep. <laughs> I want to make, make that movie. Uh, I was talking about it. It's yeah. What's eating Gilbert Grape and what's eating? What's no, is Gilbert is Gilbert Grape eating Roger Rabbit? Yeah, Gilbert Grape framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. God, <laughs> that's too bad. That's a good name for a movie, though, for sure. Yeah, that was kind of awkward. Um, uh, I was trying to show you this idea. Yeah, though, that's a great in, uh, yeah, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, they have the acne hole, and you can yeah. take that hole and throw it against the wall, and then you have a pour on the floor. And so it's quite simple that uh, you could maybe reverse that and go like that, and then, wait, what did I just do? I have no idea what I just did, but I do know <laughs> that I can peel the hole off. And, uh -huh. and, and then uh, feel bad about how Poorly, I did that trick. Uh, <laughs> later. It's still very uh, cool. There was a uh, hole, and then there was not a hole. Yeah, I mean, that is. You, you put your finger through the card. Yeah. I did put my finger through the card. Put your finger through the card, and then it was a card. <laughs> That's right. Oh. You boil it down, I did the trick. Yeah. <laughs> right? 
Um, look at this, guys. <laughs> oh.